Hello YouTube, uh, this is the internals of your typical IC dimmer that you find in most uh, domestic properties around the UK. It's uh, the, the leading edge type, there's two varieties, there's leading edge and training edge. But uh, for today we're just going to concentrate on the um, leading edge dimming. It, um, it surprised me to know that uh, there's an awful lot of electricians out there who don't quite fully understand how these things tick. So I thought I'd do a quick overview of um, how these things actually work. Um, yeah, so um, it's not going to be a technical video, I'm not going to go into design or any sort of stupid calculations. I just want to do a quick run through <coughs> each component and um, by the end of the video you'll have a very good idea how these things work. Um, we get the scope out and take some um, actual waveforms. So first off, I'm just going to doodle down a quick um, schematic of what we've got in front of us and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, just uh, before I do that, I'll just point out a few, a few um, components in here. That, that is actually the, um, the, the triac, that device there. That's the diac. That is a variable resistor, potentiometer. Um, that big, big thing on the front is just an inductor, but uh, that don't really have a lot to do with what we're going to be talking to. I'll give a, a brief um, overview of what that, that um, device does, but um, other than that, there's only about three or four components we need to know about. So, um, on with the schematic. So, so here's a simplified version of the, um, the, the dimmer circuit we just uh, looked at a moment ago. Um, I've omitted the inductor and um, fuses and whatnot, things that don't really have, a, have an effect on the circuit as an operational thing. Anyway, so obviously we've got the lamp there. Uh, I'll just give a quick um, brief introduction to each uh, component in here. And by the end of it, before we even start looking at waveforms, you're going to have a very good idea how these things work. So. Um, this part of the circuit, this is an RC network. Um, basically it works on like an RC time constant. Basically the higher the resistance is here, the more time it takes for C1 to charge and thus charge to a, um, a required voltage that we're looking at. And uh, the lesser the resistance, obviously uh, the voltage is going to be reached here quicker so the RC time constant, I don't want to go into any calculations with that. If you're interested in RC time constants, just Google it. Um, here's the DIAC. It's, um, the DIAC is an acronym for Diode Alternating Current. Basically it's um, two diodes facing each other. And basically this component it can conduct in, um, in the negative half cycle of the wave and the positive half cycle of the wave and it won't conduct obviously at 0 volts basically it's very, I, look, I like to look at it as um, uh, like a Zener diode that works in both directions <clears throat> because diacs they have um, um, like a threshold voltage when they actually snap on when they start conducting and it's usually around 30 volts this one anyway um, what else can I tell you about the diac? I think that's all you need to know really, basically about that. That it conducts in both, uh, um, in positive or negative, and it won't conduct, obviously, when it's um, zero, zero volts. And it snaps on quickly when it reaches um, a threshold voltage. Um, well, basically it's the... Um, breakdown voltage that it starts conducting. So that's the diac. And this one here, this is the triac. So you've got the gate, MT1, MT2. It's basically it's very similar to a thyristor that um, obviously it, um, receives a voltage from the gate and it starts conducting. But the thyristor would only be able to conduct on the positive half with the triac it can conduct like the diac, negative and on the positive half of the cycle. So one thing to keep in mind that 
once the diac's triggered, so once it reaches its 30 volt threshold, which it's um, getting from the RC circuit there, it snap on extremely quickly. I'll show you on the scope later. It's near, it's, it's unmeasurable. It's that quick, and the gate start conducting, and thus the triac start conducting, and the triac conduct until it reaches naught volts, and that's in both parts. So if it if it starts conducting negative thirty volts, it keep conducting until it reaches naught volts. It's clear as mud. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll I'll, um, I'll do a quick scribble down of uh, of um, an OC sine wave, and we we'll, uh, run through a cycle on paper, and then we we'll go to the scope, then in our um, show how the thing operates. Okay. So here's a, a quick scribble down of a, an OC waveform, and uh, what's actually happening as we're um, operating the dimmer switch. So um, you've got to remember an, I, an AC wave cycle, a period, actually happens over some time. So if you just keep that in mind. Um, so I've got the, um, the potentiometer set to half power. Um, so if we have a quick run through time. So the shaded area here is going to be the RC charge time because obviously from that point and that point takes some time. So as the RC network's charging until it reaches the 30 volt threshold for the diac, the diac snaps on. You can see that line there going straight up. Thus it's conducting and conducts conduction through the gate of the um, the triac and the triac will start conducting until it reaches zero volts and then the cycle of repeat in the negative half. Like I said before the diac and the triac can both work negative and positive. That's a posit positive half cycle that's a negative half cycle of an AC waveform. So if time goes on again in the neg negative half of the cycle this, this shaded area would be the RC charge time and 30 volts will be met and then the diac a snap on again and then the gate of the, the triac will start conducting thus through the lamp and then the cycle repeats clear as mud again you should be getting it now surely so I think that's all you need to know so I think now what we do now we're um, hook up the, the oscilloscope and take some waveforms and um, We'll have a little twiddle about with the knob and uh, take it from there. Thank you very much. See you at the scope. So here we are at the scope and now I've I twiddled my knob and uh, you'll see uh, exactly what I was getting at earlier. As, as I said before, this um, just bear in mind that this uh, shaded area under it is the actual RC charging time, that's when the um, the diac's not conducting and the line that shoots up is when it snaps on and conducts the triac. So if I have a little twiddle with my knob you'll see what I mean. Uh, the yellow waveform, I was, um, the last drawing that I did you probably, now on the schematic you probably notice I'd C1, C2 at the top left, this is where I've actually got the probes. So, um, so if I'm on full power or near on full power. If you can see the charge time there, it's taking less time. If we dim it right down, this is the charge time, that's when nothing's conducting, so most of the waveform from the uh, positive and negative end are being cut off, cut short, and it's only these little bits here that are conducting. Now I just want to have a quick chat about this um, snap-on time with the um, the diac. So if I zoom in and sort the cursors out to actually uh, try and find out how how quick it snaps on. So there you can see the actual time is. Let's go on the cursors. 
it actually takes 14 microseconds for that um, 14 microseconds uh, rise time that the uh, diac snaps on and um, this is a point now where I'm going to talk about that big um, inductor that's on the front of it because of the because it's switching at such a high rate and fast rate snapping on that quick it can actually cause harmonics in the mains and RF as well and the inductor basically used for RF suppression and um, any nasty little glitches it might get in the mains and it's because of this switching that's why the um, the inductors placed in the uh, dimmer circuit so let's zoom back out so by now it should be clear as mud to you how these things actually work uh, if you're not quite getting it watch it again I promise it will come to you it's uh, very similar to a uh, pulse width modulation in a digital circuit but this obviously is analog but a clever little clever little device isn't they the diac and triac diac and triac yeah so there you go I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it um, made sense and I'll catch you again later Cheers, bye.